many quick shout outs starting this video thank you to all the subscribers so far we've hit 20,000 I'm over the moon and it's come with great timing just in time for this video so sit back relax and enjoy these fantastic views I'm nearly at the end of the ride by now but you know I'm filming this now so that I can put it in the start video all right see you in the next clip Well, good morning everybody welcome to episode six of the hill climb series and it's a special episode we have in store today a little probably a little bit longer than the than the usual as well because today we have new bike day and what better way to test it out i thought than to come to the peak district and ride the band of climbers hardest 100k ride super hilly just over 3,000 meters of climbing and just a smidge over 100 kilometers uh, but check this out this is just look how lush this is i hooked up a factor i hooked up a Varese velo because i appreciate you know a high performance high-end bike but also because i knew that i needed a bike that would match the level of commitment and the expectations that I put on myself and not just as a brand but as a bike um, the O2 van the previous edition 100% did that for me um, and so you know that's what I'm certainly hoping the new version will do and judging by the improvements that they say they've made with weight and aerodynamics then I am I'm pretty sure it will but we'll find out you know, at the end of the day a bike is is a tool for me uh, it's something that I use every single day just like you know uh, a plumber would use a piece of copper pipe or you know uh, a farmer would use a tractor do you know what I mean like that's a really bad analogy like I don't know why I thought that but it's a tool that allows me to share this journey with you all of course now this bike has come at a very good time obviously we are just kicking off the hill climb series on YouTube and in a couple of weeks time doing our first actual hill climb race but this bike is not here because of that um, obviously this O2 VAM was brought out in July with the Tour de France but the way the stars have aligned I found myself with my hands on one now in late August and that suits me just because of the hill climb season um, but it's also early enough that it gives me a chance to get used to it but you know that leads me nicely on to what I wanted to say really and that's I don't really talk a lot about the brand and and, and the guys at the Verizon Velo Experience Center they've really they've really looked after me well and you know to get me on this bike after just you know two months of it being launched the fact that it's actually only one of a few bikes in the country um, and that it's been used for demo purposes for the time being and now I finally got my hands on it you know I, I can only say thank you to them for, for well being so quick but also seeing the 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 possibility of what it could achieve over the next couple of weeks what i love most about the relationship is that they really buy into what i do um what i believe in and what i want to achieve but also how i want to get across this journey to you guys through youtube through strava through so of course this bike promises to be better but what better way to see that than to take it out today and i'm looking forward to seeing the climbs out there and seeing what i'm made of what it's made of and what this route is made of so let's go ride let's go ride to give you a little bit of context about this event if you'd never heard of it before um band of climbers a couple of years ago they decided to uh, put a call out to see if people could come up with a route that was less than 100 kilometers, as hilly as possible, and didn't go over the same road twice. Like, you weren't allowed to, like, ride the same road, like, both ways, for example. And uh, this particular route in the Peak District, um, which has been slightly changed since then, uh, has, has been one that they've constantly come back to and have now created this 
bit of a mass participation day for people to come and get a timing chip, enter, get a jersey, uh, get feed stations, all the rest of it. So it says toughest 100 Sheffield. Need the toughest 100 wheels. Well, we're on the road, finally. I've been putting it off for the last half an hour, waiting for people, chatting to people. I'm pretty excited for this because I'm not really riddling the Peak District properly. And it looks like it's going to be a wonderful day of sunshine, steep climbs, and some pretty technical descents. All of the things that I love, quite frankly, plus sharing it with 150 other keen, ambitious cyclists. If you're interested in this route, you can find it on my Strava activities. I'll link it down below. And there's just over 3,000 meters of climbing in this 100 kilometers. So needless to say, it's fairly spicy. It was a bit bumpy there. Yeah, it was a bit bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> there. Well, we're only 20 minutes in and a couple of kilometers, but you can already tell that the statement for the day has already been laid out. Short, sharp, punchy climbs and then descents that really do require full attention when you're coming down onto a dead junction, dead stop and some steep, steep drops with hairpins to boot. But we've got some wonderful green scenery and a tailwind so far. So this is a fabulous example of, uh, of what they were trying to get at when trying to plan a route like this. It's actually quite difficult to do. But when you're trying to avoid roads, you have to find the smallest, gnarliest lanes. And I was coming down a main like B road, fast descent, and all of a sudden, there's a lot of signs saying left, caution. And it looked like I was going down like a cycle path. And I took this left turn and I've come down here. It's completely hidden. And I have no idea where this is taking me, but obviously to another climb. Oh. You know, on these really steep gradients, like 10, 15%, I definitely noticed the difference of this bike the marginal weight loss of like 300 grams but also like how rigid it is in a good way like it feels stiffer but it feels it feels like i'm losing nothing when i'm going uphill especially the steep ones like this one do so you know what i'm really noticing as well is how smooth these roads are since obviously the tour de france came years ago it's a very, very nice around here. So 150 hardy souls have signed up for this event. If you're interested in something like this, definitely let us know in the comment section because I'm sure Banner climbers and still they want to build on this and hopefully bring it back next year even bigger and better. 
I would like to think everyone that signed up for this is as keen on climbing hills as I am. So there'll be nothing but positive feedback. <laughs> National Hill Climb, National Hill Climb Champs was here in 2014, ah. it started here, but then in 2017, the year I did it, it started up at the junction just a couple hundred metres away. But yeah, top five hardest on the route is probably. Well this one is? I would say so, yeah. It's definitely probably the, the most famous yeah. climb on the route. Because Stocksbridge is quite industrial I think and it's got a uh, history with the hill climbing scene. Yeah, yeah. Get over there, it's all downhill from there, yeah? Yeah, it's all downhill. <laughs> oh. oh. Ah, it's bringing back memories. <laughs> We've had such good surface so far. Yeah. Plus you're under shade as well. Oh yeah, that's all. Good. And you can't, you can't see if there's a hole there. It's all part of the fun. I can see people zigzagging already. That's always a good sign when you can see like miles ahead and people are zigzagging. <laughs> this is like the only bit of respite. <laughs> yeah, where are the burgers? <laughs> I may have stopped a little bit too long on that first feed. I've got some terrible caffeine legs without the caffeine. Just past the Hornfirth Cycling Club out on their Sunday morning ride. Having a nice day so far, a third of the way in. Just meeting up with people, chatting, sharing a couple of kilometers. <laughs> Straight back uphill again. <laughs> ah, that's the second time he's overtaken me today. I don't know how that has happened. That's how close the route comes to almost, almost breaking the rules and going back on itself and touching the same road twice. You can almost see it on the map, it's so close. This is why it's 107k and not 100k. Yeah. So go off, go off. Just 
Bit shaky, bit shaky. <laughs> oh, what a view from the top of you. Bamford, we've just gone through the, the, the second feed, the final feed at 73k. And now it's around about 30k back. And a lot of people are at that feed, chatting to a lot of people, seeing how they were doing. A few little broken bodies but spirit seemed high and to be honest I think people are really really enjoying the challenge and knowing that the last 30k is still like it's a chunk of climbing but it's something that many people I'm sure are capable of doing so we're gonna push on for the next 30k give some encouragement out and uh, have some fun. Thing is, it's the longest climb on the route now, and it comes in the last 20 kilometers. Somewhat on the main road, but something that you guys don't know is that yesterday I came to this climb, Burbage Moor, to tackle the KOM. Happy to report that I managed to take the KOM. Uh, by nine seconds It was a big effort. I'm very proud of it and the bike fared very well on such a fast hard effort Well boys keep it going Let's go Wow, the last couple of climbs are a stark contrast to like the first half. Like the first 50 or 60k, maybe even first 70k, is very like what what I would probably imagine like most people are familiar with riding, like just up and down, steep gradients and then you know down some narrow lanes. But then the second half is more like your typical uh, like I suppose British National Park, like some longer you know, four, five, six percent climbs around like, you know, three to five K long. Something that, you know, really speaking, not many of us have and we have to travel to reach them. So for this route to have, I guess, bits of both, is probably quite a rare thing. The scenery has changed obviously through the day. Oh, and before I forget, now that it's so quiet, It's offensive, like, <laughs> I'm riding in groups and like, if I'm ever talking to somebody and freewheeling at the same time, I've got to listen quite hard, so. But yeah, that new free hub on the 2833 new wheel set. Whew, tasty. Well, we're on our last little climb of the day. Got two kilometers until we finish. Well, it has been a very, very nice day. Enjoy the organization, of course, and feed stations. Good banked all around. And that's always good to have, especially when you're hacking around, going up and down hills all day. Uh, how about this for a bike review day? <laughs> New bike day, bike review day, by taking it around the lanes and the roads on this spectacular route. Um, well, first and foremost, like, there is a difference between this and my old bike. The difference is subtle, I think. Um, the obvious changes, of course, to the frame you've probably already seen in photos like uh, some of the tubes are certainly more aerodynamically shaped and there's a greater stack so I have less spaces under my stem now which makes for a rather aesthetically pleasing look you know aside from the aesthetics and how awesome this bike looks and I feel incredibly lucky to be on it but I definitely don't take it for granted there's something about it it's like on the tip of my tongue it's obviously very lightweight uh, not just to the hand when you pick it up, but when you're actually riding it, like it is obvious. And even in comparison to the last frame, you know, the, the actual build, this one is coming at 6.3 kilos. So it's 300 to 400 grams lighter than the previous model. With the same components, we've taken all of the, the bits off the frame of the last bike and put it on this. So it's not a completely new bike. 
and but the wheels are new so black ink's new 2833s which are apparently optimized for this frame and there is a difference in this bike even if i run my old wheel set the 20s now because i'm one of the lucky few that has one of these bikes in the uk currently i have a very rare opportunity to sort of compare the old auto van with this new one as not many people have had that luxury and even riding the old wheel set the 20s the bike still feels different even with the old wheel set on it which i'm going to keep as spares which i find quite interesting it goes to show that the bike still feels different even with the same wheel set on and we all know how much of a difference wheel set makes plus tires of course but over today's ride 100k four and a half hours obviously 3000 meters of climbing i felt very little fatigue so you know me for long enough now i love the way a bike feels to me that's the most important thing and all the other data that comes along with it which you can find out on res velo's website about this frame set and about how it's been optimized and the new tube shapes and how that all works specifically the new funky seat clamp i very much enjoy riding this bike it's put a smile on my face today that's why it gets a massive thumbs up and i'm not just saying that the true test is if you enjoy riding your bike and you know not every bike brings that out to you but today i feel like that is just the case and hopefully going forward we'll have much success and fun on it so that's gonna wrap up this video everyone thank you so much for tuning in i'm gonna roll into the finish now and have some refreshments i hope i hope you enjoyed this video please leave a like please subscribe thank you so much for the 20,000 subscribers and i will see you in the next video